Where are you at? I'm at school. Are you excited to go to school today? Uh, my tummy was hurting, but now it feels better. Uh, yeah, you had a tummy ache this morning, but it feels better? Uh -huh. Good, I'm so glad. And then it even slow up. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey. Let's be honest, every time I go to record, it's not Hi. Awesome. My kids. Hi, friends. Hi. <laughs> hey, friends, an official good morning to you guys. Today is Friday, and Hi. Elodie is at school right now. Hi. I'm home with Oaksy. I'm trying to pack our bags Hi. and everything real quick because we're going to go to Zero. excited about that? <laughs> that was a really cute reaction. Um, I wasn't sure if you knew where I was talking about. Okay, okay, we get it. I got to talk, okay? <laughs> I didn't know if he knew like what SeaWorld meant really, but I guess he knows. I guess he knows enough. So, I am in the process right now of packing everything. I actually tried to go on Wednesday to SeaWorld when Elodie was also in school. I literally drove up to their gates and they were closed because now with like the off season, they're only open Thursday to Sunday. So I was like, crap. So trying to redeem myself today and go um, just for a little while. We only will have like about an hour or so in the park um, before we have to go pick up Elodie up. It's a little tight, but I'm gonna try it out, see if he likes it. Um, we're gonna, they have like a really cool splash pad there, so we bring his little sleeve for his arm. I gotta update you guys big time on his arm situation. But um, yeah, it's 10 o'clock right now. We have such busy mornings on school mornings these days. We get up at like 5, 5.30. Um, we bring Ben to work, and then we come home and we get ready. Um, and then Elodie, like we're out the door by like 7.45 to drop Elodie off and we don't get back for a little while and so it's just nuts. So it seems like later in the day, but like, I don't know where the day's gone. It's just gone to like getting her ready for the day. So I'm gonna try and enjoy some one-on-one -on -one time with Oak. Are you ready? Yeah, do you see them sunbathing over there? Mm. Can you blow them a kiss? Good job, silly. Okay, say bye otters. You wanna go see them, Doodle? You wanna go see them? We were Go see them. No, you don't wanna go see them? They're friendly. Go say hi. You wanna go up say hi together? No. <laughs> you wanna go that way? You sure you don't wanna go? You'd get candy. I stopped recording on Friday and I thought I was going to continue recording and we honestly had a really good day Friday. Y'all, I have some stuff to fill you in on. 
It's been kind of a crazy weekend. I ended up stopping this vlog thinking I was going to finish it this weekend and then everything kind of unraveled before our eyes for this weekend. Like nothing went as planned, which it happens, you know, life. Friday, we ended up going back to SeaWorld after Ben got off work. It was a lot of fun. Um, ben was supposed to go to like a Habitat for Humanity project to help a house build project um, that he was super excited about. It had been planned for weeks. So we were spending some like family time together on Friday night and so we went back to SeaWorld and Everything was good. The kids had a blast at SeaWorld. Friday night, the kids were running around like maniacs in the house. Um, we, they got down to bed at like nine o'clock at night, like super late for them. Oaks's bedtime right now is like seven o'clock-ish. So really late, um, but everything was fine. Ben and I sat down to watch TV and then the night took a turn because Ben got a sound notification on his phone from Oaks' room. We have like the Owlette camera in his room and so it just like sends a notification to your phone. Luckily, his phone was right next to him. He checked it immediately because we were like, oh, that's weird. It was like 11 o'clock at this point at night and Ben goes up to him and Oakley can't breathe. It was so scary. He went up to him and I was watching him on the monitor, still sitting on the couch the, the whole time. But once I realized what Ben realized, like at the same time through the monitor, I ran off the couch. I met him at the bottom of the stairs and he just, he was coughing and gasping for air. I mean, he was getting a little bit of air, but like it was not good. He was looking so concerned. Um himself and it was so scary ben was like get him a drink shauna get him a drink and at the same time i'm like trying to get him a drink and you know it's like baby bottles you have like a million different pieces in them and so i'm like fumbling with them because immediately just something wasn't right i did not feel good about it and as i'm getting him a drink i'm like ben do we need to call 911 because oh this is like <laughs> making me like scared and shaky all over again but i was like do we need to call 911 and he was like, no, it's fine, just give him a drink. And so we gave him a drink and normally he like guzzles his drinks down and he didn't. He just like continued gasping for air and we had no idea what was going on. I mean, we just put like a healthy, perfectly normal child to bed. He was literally running around screaming with his sister two hours before this. And I ended up calling 911. Um, paramedics came and he, by the time the paramedics came, he had regained his breathing a little bit um, on his own. There wasn't much we could do except kind of just talk to him and wait for it to, I guess, even itself out. But we were just like, what is going on? Um, the paramedics listened to his chest and they said it was clear, it sounded good. Um, he took a deep breath in while they were there and they were like, oh yeah, I hear that raspiness. Like, what's that raspiness for? And so then we were still talking to paramedics. Um, it was a situation where I guess like this like paramedic truck came. Um, it wasn't really like a transport ambulance kind of thing. So we were, they were like, yeah, we don't know what that raspiness is. Um, we would probably suggest taking him to the hospital. And so we were waiting on the ambulance to come. And in the few minutes that we were waiting for the ambulance to come, um, he was okay and he was back... <sighs> I want to say he was back to normal because while we were on the phone 91 and after the paramedics got here, he was kind of like just very lethargic, um, not himself, not waking up, um, very out of it. But he was okay as far as like they're monitoring his oxygen and stuff and he could breathe. Um, but then as we continued to stand there with him and the paramedics, he like all of a sudden coughed and it was this really terrible sounding cough. And the paramedics said, oh, that sounds like croup. Listen to him again and everything, and they were like, I think that's croup. Um, they asked if we still wanted the ambulance transport, um, and we said no, we would just monitor him at home, and they were very nice. They were like, if you need us you know, to come back, you know, just call us, like no big deal kind of thing. But once they said it was croup, they also said that they saw some like snot running out of his nose, and they asked if he'd been sick recently, and like a week and a half ago, he came down with like a really sudden fever of like 101.5 when we were out actually at the Children's Museum here in San Antonio. And it came on like super suddenly, had no idea it was coming on. And I got home, you know, and he then ended up having a cold from that. Um, his fever like resolved itself in like 12 hours. I mean, it was pretty quick. And then he ended up having a cold, but... That's him coughing right now he's taking a nap but 
It was okay. He got hit the worst out of our family for the cold, but it was still like just a cold at the end of the day. Um, so I guess this cold turned into croup. I guess croup comes on suddenly in the middle of the night and it's common to have breathing issues with croup. We, we had no idea to even think croup. I mean, the whole thing was kind of nuts just because that was not on our radar at all. Like, yes, he said a little runny nose, but his energy was back to normal. His mood was, he wasn't coughing on Friday at all. He wasn't like, I mean, you guys saw him in the videos, like he was running, he was happy. Like, it was just like the very tail end of a cold where you're just like, oh, it's a kid, no big deal. Like, wipe the sun away kind of thing. But for whatever reason, that night it turned into croup. So now this weekend, he's been sleeping in our bed with us and Ben had to cancel his plans with Habitat for Humanity because I was just so scared for Ben to leave us that day and not knowing the status of Oaks because we were even thinking we might have to bring him into like the emergency room during the day, depending on how the rest of the night went. And it was just really scary. Yeah. I mean, to have to call 911 on your child when you don't think your child can breathe and you don't know like what's going to happen in the next 30 seconds, like if they're going to stop breathing or if they're going to lose consciousness or anything, like it was so scary. Um, but yeah, that's kind of why I stopped vlogging. I just, the whole weekend we ended up just doing stuff around the house and just monitoring Oakley and luckily he's been doing well. Um, he had a little bit of croup, not last night, but the night before at night when he slept, um, cause apparently it gets better during the day and then gets worse at night. Um, and then last night he was better. Um, He's still very tired during the day, I feel like, but he's getting better. Poor Oaks is just going through it. I feel so bad for him. Like, it's just one thing after another for him. Moving on from that, <sighs> I'm having a good day today. It's really emotional thinking back to that moment because it was so hard, but I'm always, like, giving Elodie silver, and we're getting it, but he's not old enough quite yet for silver, um, and, like, taking our vitamins and everything. I think most kids' vitamins start at two, so I'm about to get him on those. Um, because he turns two in 10 days, which is mind blowing. Um, so yeah, we're doing so many things to be like preventative and to keep ourselves healthy as we go into this like fall and cold flu season. And one thing I'm doing for myself is using Euro, which Euro is actually a vaginal probiotic. If you ever struggle with vaginal issues, which is super common around like just your period and pregnancy and everything, if you're a woman, you know how much of a struggle that vaginal issues can be. And so keeping your vagina healthy is so, so important because it's very uncomfortable if you have an issue <laughs> with your vagina. So one way of making sure that I'm starting by the inside and working out is by using Euro because they literally start from the inside workout to keep your vagina as healthy as possible. All it is is to two capsules a day. And for me personally, it's maybe biased, but they're actually, I'm like almost done with this pill bottle. Oh, <laughs> I just spilled them. Luckily there wasn't that many to spill because I'm almost done with it. But they're um, powder capsules. So this is what they look like. They're not very big at all. Um, and I prefer taking these ones. I hate like, if you've ever taken um, prenatals that are like huge and all like chalky and stuff, oh, I hate those. So these are really easy to take. You just take two of them a day. And after about a month, two months, about eight weeks, um, technically, I mean, you might start to notice a difference in like a month, but really like you should give it a full eight weeks before noticing a difference, but it helps control the odor of your vagina. It helps keep it healthy. So like the yeast infections and everything away. And this is for anyone that just wants to do anything preventative to keep their vagina healthy or if you're sexually active or if you're prone to feeling vaginal discomfort or vaginal imbalances this is what you want to take to keep the uckies away literally euro does have 5 billion cfus in it it's non-gmo it's 100 percent vegan and gluten-free so it checks all of those boxes if you have any like specific dietary needs so yeah i definitely recommend euro i've been taking it myself i love it and i can definitely see a difference in my overall health with taking it so that's really Really important like I said we are trying to do everything we can to keep our family healthy um, and this is one way that for a woman you can make sure you're keeping yourself healthy and also as a mom who always has to be on top of their game and can never take a sick day this is important so you're not uncomfortable at any point so I'll make sure to link this down below in my description box so you can take a look at it yourself